Well, welcome to the special meeting of the Northampton City Council on August 5th, 2024. Um, I'm Alex Jarrett, a City Council President. I'll be presiding this morning, uh, along with Vice President Rachel Maori. Uh, this meeting and all participating will be audio and video recorded. Uh, this will not be uh, this is not currently live on Northampton Open Media, but it will be recorded and will be posted to the Northampton Open Media's uh, page as soon as uh, we are able to. Um, <clears throat> I now call the City Council to order. Would you call the roll, please? Laura, I think you were muted. I apologize. Councillor Dobbs. Here. Councillor Elkins. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Clemmer. Here. Councillor Labarge. He here. Councillor Maori. Maybe I haven't made her a co-host yet. I did see her. Uh, here. Okay. Yeah, I need um, to be made a co-host. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sure. Councillor Moulton. Here. Councillor Perry. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg. Here. Council President, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have one item on our agenda today. That is 24.122, an order to rescind order to place <laughs> a ride on November 5th. 2024 state election ballot. Uh, two readings uh, is is requested, so suspension of the rules is requested. Um, I'll read the order and then ask the uh, mayor's office who is recommending this to speak to it. Um, ordered that the Northampton City Council rescind order number 24.094 submitted on June 6th, 2024 and voted on June 20th, 2024 which authorized the notice to be sent to the State Elections Division for an override question to be placed on a 2024 state election ballot to be held in Northampton on November 5th, 2024, pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 21CG. Notice of rescission of the order for an override shall be sent to the State Elections Division. And um, just a reminder that we are deliberating this morning on whether to rescind this override order. So I do ask councilors to keep their comments uh, relevant to this order. Mayor uh, and staff, would you like to speak to this? Sure, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming together so quickly. Um, I'm just gonna go over some stuff and then I'm gonna hand it over to Director Nardi to go over some numbers. So. Uh, before discussing the new revenue numbers and how they impact that our budget and the timing for an override, I just want to give you, as well as everyone who's watching and listening, a quick refresher on our management of stabilization funds and undesignated fund balances, also known as free cash, um, because of it, it has a direct bearing on the decisions uh, you're making today. <clears throat> In accordance with the Massachusetts Department of Revenue guidance, the city of Northampton maintains stabilization funds, and we do this for three reasons. First and foremost, stabilization funds help stabilize budgets and avoid disruption of services when unexpected developments increase expenses or depress revenues. Stabilization funds are not used to support recurring expenditures except temporarily in concert with a clear plan to secure revenues and replenish stabilization funds in short order. Second, stabilization funds are akin to interest earning personal savings accounts, which are a little less liquid than your main checking account, but are still accessible when needed. By putting some money in stabilization funds, we earn additional interest and stretch our dollars. Third, well-maintained stabilization funds do help improve bond ratings, which lower borrowing costs and help stretch dollars. In fiscal year 2011, when our stabilization funds were basically um, gone, there was no almost nothing in uh, the two that existed then. Our bond rating was A plus negative. As of year uh, 2017, our bond rating is the highest possible at AAA. <coughs> Excuse me. The primary way stabilization funds are built up and maintained is with undesignated funds. Undesignated funds are generated at the end of a fiscal year when, after the books close, 
more revenue has been collected or less money has been spent than estimated at the start of the fiscal year. Cautious estimating to generate free cash is far sounder fiscal management than overly optimistic estimating, which can lead to mid-year budget shortfalls and staff cuts. The Massachusetts Division of Local Services Financial Management Resource Bureau stresses that free cash is not a recurring revenue source, as we can't know at the beginning of the fiscal year how much, if any, free cash will materialize at the end of the fiscal year. In turn, the Bureau says cities should, quote, limit their use of free cash to funding one-time expenditures, examples, capital projects, snow and ice deficits, or emergencies, or use it to fund other reserves, end quote. This is Northampton's practice. Northampton has aimed to generate annual free cash totaling three to 5% of our operating budget, though the Commonwealth has changed its guidance and now suggests a target of five to 7%. We are estimating the FY24 free cash amount is 5.5% of our operating budget. The books are not closed yet and free cash won't be certified until the fall. But while the amount of revenue Northampton collected in the fourth quarter outperformed our expectations, our overall free cash management is still at the low end of the state's guidance and just a little above our own policy. And without this very high interest, it would be 3.6%. So at the low end of our policy, which is lower than the state's recommendation. And as our independent financial auditor told the city council this year, your, the city of Northampton's financial policies are working. As I said, free cash is, rut is routinely <coughs> excuse me, used to maintain our other stabilization funds, including the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund. And this fund has been directly supporting the Northampton Public Schools budget with transfers of 1.2 million in FY24 and nearly 2 million in FY25. Unlike our other stabilization funds, the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund is intended to help manage higher than expected operating costs. Yes, in general, stabilization funds are not meant to be used for recurring expenses, but you can do it responsibly for a limited time if you have a plan to secure recurring revenue and, and replenish the stabilization fund, just as you might take out a loan only if you had a plan to pay that loan back. The Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund is part of a plan. That plan is known as the Fiscal Stability Plan. This was established in 2013 to help overcome the revenue caps from Prop 2.5, and maintain essential services with periodic, but not excessively frequent property tax overrides. The Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund was seeded with some of the funds from the 2013 override and further built up annually with the help of free cash. When operating expenses rise faster than expected, we can draw from the fund and help cover those costs in the short run. When the fund drops to a certain level and needs to be replenished, and more recurring revenue needs to be secured to maintain services, then we call for another override referendum, effectively asking voters if they want to renew and extend the plan. After taking over $3 million from the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund in FY24 and 25 for the Northampton Public Schools, we had determined that low level had been reached and we called for a $3 million override. <laughs> Last Monday, Director Nardi called me midday uh, when I was at home with COVID and said, quote, we need to talk. I have most of the fourth quarter numbers. That kicked off intense review and then discussions with the city clerk and the city solicitor to figure out what was possible regarding rescinding the order before we made a decision um, and tried to figure out how to meet the hard deadline that we have this Thursday, I'm mean, sorry, this Wednesday, when the actual physical order uh, imprinted with the city seal needs to be at the state elections division in Boston. To go into a little bit more detail as explained in uh, my communication to the council on Thursday, which I think is linked to this agenda, we had an unusual uptick in fourth quarter revenues that were not anticipated by third quarter numbers that were tracking just on target. So allow me to give you a few examples and then Director Nardi is gonna give a presentation going over the numbers. So the motor vehicle excise tax brought in $1.1 million in the fourth quarter, which amounted to 30% of the total motor vehicle excise tax revenues for the year. In past years, the fourth quarter brought in less revenue and typically accounted for a smaller portion of the total receipts of the year. The third quarter revenue from the hotel motel tax was down about 25% from the previous year, raising concerns about potentially a bad downward trend. But thankfully that proved to be a blip and it rebounded in the fourth quarter. 
annual cannabis revenue had declined every fiscal year since 2020. Um, the, and that was the first full fiscal year of legalized cannabis. So that was the high. And then every year it's declined. And the fourth quarter has not been the strongest quarter for cannabis generally. But this year, the fourth quarter was the strongest quarter, helping to make FY24 the first increase in yearly cannabis uh, tax revenue compared to the prior year since 2020. As also mentioned in my pre in my prior communication, was over twenty uh, over two million dollars in interest accrued on our existing cash balances. This is thanks to Treasurer Collector Chris Bissell, who identified and took advantage of a new higher interest rate yielding banking account as interest rates reached a twenty three year high. The reason why we had called for an override earlier was because in the FY twenty four and twenty five budget. As I said, we drew significant amounts from the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund to support the Northampton Public Schools. Again, this fund was built to help temporarily support higher than expected operating expenses between property tax overrides. But once the fund gets too low, a new override is needed to replenish the fund and secure higher levels of recurring revenue for those operating expenses. <laughs> Not only can this higher than expected cash free cash amount help replenish the fiscal stability stabilization fund for now the stronger fy24 revenues directly inform future revenue projections as they're partly based on the average of the previous five years how much revenue we expect to collect impacts when we determine the next override will be necessary now we don't know what the next six years hold i mean sorry the next six months hold <coughs> <coughs> Um, but we do know that there is a lot of talk, right? So there's a lot of chatter right now about the Fed starting to drop rates uh, next month, especially after the jobs numbers that uh, came out on Friday. Um, a drop in rates will impact our interest, but it also could have a positive effect on new growth, though that would be a lagging effect. As we've explained, there are many pieces to this, and we use data from previous years to make projections as things locally, statewide, nationally, globally are constantly shifting. And as has been stated by experts, our financial team does an excellent job navigating it all and responsibly managing the city's resources. So we will have to see more numbers in the upcoming quarters before making final decisions about an override for FY26. But for now, we have reason to wait with these numbers from the fourth quarter. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn this over to Director Nerdy and uh, to Sydney, who I believe is going to help with the PowerPoint. And I thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you. With your permission, I'd like to ask Sydney um, to share her screen. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to share with you is um, some of the numbers that I were I was looking at and what prompted my call to the mayor on Monday of last week. Um, so uh, Sydney, if you could go to the next screen, please. So motor vehicle excise um, total receipts came in at three point four million dollars, which is thirty two percent or eight hundred and thirty five dollars and thirty. One dollars, excuse me, eight hundred thirty-five thousand thirty-one dollars over the estimate for the FY twenty twenty-four year. Um, the way we uh, practice or the way we budget for those is uh, standard using three to five year averages. Um, that would be from FY twenty eighteen to FY twenty two. It's always the years that have been finalized. Um, that beat was two point eight six million and two point eight five million, respectively. We saw an increase in the receipts of 14.8% or $443,000 over the prior year in FY 2023. As the mayor mentioned, the fourth quarter of FY 2024 brought in $1.1 million or 30% of the total revenues for this year. We generally, as she said, see a smaller amount in the fourth quarter. That is different this year. In FY 2025, we increased the estimate up to 29 using the historical averages, again, they are 2.93 for the three-year and 2.86 for the five-year. The next slide shows motor vehicle excise from 2014 to 2024. And if you notice, 2024 is slightly increased and it's not always been increasing, it fluctuates. 
And the next slide shows the percentage change. I, what I wanted to highlight here was the percentage change over the previous year. So while it has been increasing and dipping a little bit, these show the increase from year to year. So for instance, in FY23, you can see the 0.3%, um, 0.3%, uh, 30%, 0.3%, um, that is dropped from FY22. So that is the percent it increased, excuse me, yes, it increased over the prior year. So for FY24, it jumped from, from FY24, 14.8%, as I mentioned. The next slide. So hotel motel, total receipts came in at $1 million, which represents a 39% or $297,700 increase over the budget estimate. This amount reflects an increase in receipts of 11% over the last year. The estimated budget for FY 2024 was set at 780,000. And again, that was based on the three to five year averages of 631,000 for the three year, uh, five, three year and the 661,000 for the five year. The budget estimate represented an increase of 15.6% or $105,000 over the previous year. When reviewing the third quarter numbers for FY 2024, it was clear that the first and second quarters were increasing, but quarter three was down a bit compared to the prior year. As the mayor mentioned, it turned out to be just a blip and the fourth quarter receipts were in line with the prior year. The FY 2025 budget going forward, and again, we didn't have these results at the time, was set at 875,000, which again was using the three to five years, which is 700,000 um, to 714,000. That represented this jump for the FY 25 representative 12% increase. So the next slide. Again, this is generally increasing, but if you go to the next slide, you can see that it's not always increasing at the same rate. So it's not a rate that we can rely on. We use what is recommended by DOR, which is our three to five year averages. The next slide, meals tax. This had a smaller jump, but FY 2024 receipts came in at $791,412, which is 21% or $141,412 over our estimate. The budget estimate in FY 2024 was $650, and again, it's based on the three to five year averages, which was $613,000 for the three year, $669,000 for the five year. The budget estimate we used was an increase of 70% or $95,500 over the FY23 year budget. Actual receipts over the prior year are only 1.5% over last year. For FY25, the budget estimate was in set by increased by 11.5% to 725,000. This is higher than the three to five year averages, but at the time last year when we were using the actuals from FY 2023, um, I, I thought it might jump more. Um, but again, it only went up 1.5, but that's still an increase. So the next slide. Again, this shows you the bar graph of each year of what it's been. The next slide shows you the percentage change over the previous year. So again, we had obviously from FY 2021, COVID affected our hotel motel and our meals, taxes and parking the most. Um, you can see it dipped. It dropped for FY 21 over the previous year. It jumped significantly in FY 2022 rebounding. It jumped a little, you know, still jumped in FY 23 to 12 by 12%, but this year it only jumped by 1.5. So again, I just, point this out to say that each year can be different. It's not always jumping by a large percentage. Um, it, it is based on the economics, uh, state economics. So moving on to the next slide. Cannabis, as the mayor mentioned, the total receipts came in at $944,812, which represents an increase of 26% or $200,417 $200, over the budget. Again, the mayor mentioned that this has been reducing every year. Um, however, this is an increase. Um, it increased by 11% over the last year or $98,659. 80,000 of that, as the mayor mentioned, or 81% of that increase came in in the fourth quarter. 
So the budget for FY25, not having this information in my hand, um, was reduced based on the historical uh, data we got and the fact that it was declining. So now that we have seen these um, new revenues, uh, we I will need to take that into account when I set the FY26 budget. If you go to the next slide, so you can see each year from F20, fiscal year 2019 to fiscal year 2020, and you can see that the fourth quarter is larger um, and it's an increase over FY 2023. Next slide. So the ambulance, ambulance revenues have been increasing yearly. The receipts were at 2.5 million at the end of the third quarter. An additional $63,000 was later booked to that quarter. Um, and that just means funding came in afterwards. So we didn't have that in the report, but it does, what happens is it gets posted later, but uh, as an effective date as part of third quarter. For FY 2024, the estimated budget was set at $2.8 million, again, based on the three to five year average, and they were in the $2.8 million and $2.6 million respectively range. Total receipts came in at 3.4 million, which is 25% or 698,000 over the budget estimate. 27% or $951,000 of the total receipts came in during quarter four. For FY25, the estimated budget was set at $3.1 million, again, based on the three to five year average of $2.8 million and $3.2 million respectively. This slide shows you the increase of the ambulance revenue since 2014 to the final FY 2024 revenues. And again, the next slide shows the change, the percent change over the prior year. Again, this is just to show that it's not always increasing by the same amount and you can't just say, let's increase it a lot because we know it increased 5% last year, it's gonna increase that much next year. We don't know that. Um, so again, we use historical data to help us set those revenues. And again, when you set estimates, it, it's not an exact science. We're using historical data. We're using what we know what's happening in the community. Um, all of those things come into play. So the next slide. So the interest. The interest is a source of general fund revenue that supports the budget. The balances that generate interest include everything that is not specifically required to be placed in a separate account which earns it its own interest. To name a few examples, it would be the undesignated fund balance, capital project funds, all of that money that is supporting those projects, those are in that um, account. The American Rescue Plan Act funds are in that. All our grants, the CDBG funds, and all the revenues that are taken in over the year, that is the account that this interest comes from. The interest is not from the stabilization accounts, trust accounts, or enterprise funds. The interest earned in all of those funds are left in those funds. They have to remain in those accounts. I just wanna say that interest is unpredictable. It's an unpredictable resource, um, a source of revenue, as it is dependent on the variable factors such as the amount of money in the account and the current interest rates. The interest rates are affected by the state of the economy and inflation. And as we have all recently heard, there is a great possibility um, that the Fed will reduce the interest rates um, as early as September. And they've been talking about that for a while. Um, in FY 2023, as the mayor mentioned, uh, in an effort to take advantage of the increased rates, the treasurer identified the high interest banking vehicle for municipal and commercial entities. It provides 90% of the secured over, overnight financial rate or SOFR, which has resulted in an average rate between 4.8 to 4.9% on the cash balance. In order to take advantage of that rate, the treasurer also made changes to manage the funds differently. So she's she's keeping as much more money in that account, having more money go to that account and having it stay there longer using the um, accounts that have a lower interest rate um, for paying bills. Um, so she is trying to take advantage of this time in um, history when the rates are so high. Um, again, I just want to remind you that the treasurer invests and places our city funds um, in an order of having them be safe, having them be liquid, and then she takes into account yield. And then if you go to the next slide, this slide just illustrates how things have changed. So it, from FY 2015 
to FY 2024. As you can see the more orangey color is the um, actual and the more reddish burnt or uh, burnt red brick color is the budget. So as you can see in FY 2023 and FY 2024, that change is the change that the treasurer made is reflected in that graph. And the next slide, and that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Director and Mayor. We'll now turn uh, it over to the council for questions to the mayor and staff. Councillor Rothenberg. Thanks. Uh, I have a few questions and then I will ask for a recess. I'd like to know what was the actual Q4 general fund total revenue? Uh, are you going to ask all your questions or you would do like them answered even one by one? So I'd like to know what was the ending revenue for the general fund? And if you have it handy, uh, what amount that was over in dollars and what amount that was over in percentages. And then I'd also like to know what the total principal is for those interest bearing accounts. So I do not have the total principal for those accounts, the cash balance account. Um, I can get that to you, but I don't have that with me. Um, as far as uh, the total amount Excluding the 2.25 in interest and excluding parking, because parking revenue, as you will, I will remind you, anything over in parking goes back to parking funds. Um, that does not become part of the undesignated fund balance. It's $2,981,411. This is an estimate. I just want to remind people this is not exactly a little bit different. I'm so sorry to I, cut you off. Yeah, I'll go My slower. Question. But I do want to remind people this is a projection. I'm sorry, it's not responsive to my question. So I just want to reframe the question. Oh, okay. On your quarterly reports where you have at, on the last line, you have the grand total. Yes. I'm looking for. Okay, it's five point five million eight hundred and three thousand one hundred and fifty five dollars and eighty one cents. And I want to remind everyone, this is a estimate right now that that includes parking, which is $606,000 that needs to be taken out of that. That includes Smith Voke of $182,904, which has to come out of that. The Medicaid that's going to go to NPS, $209,175 needs to come out of that. And that includes the $2.25 million in interest. And this, so the actual, uh, the actual grand total for the year. Was, I don't have that. I don't have. I don't have. What do you mean? Like the total your, projected I'm, amount? So no, that's the actual. I mean, I can add five point eight three if that's the overage. I was just wondering if you had that right there. So, um, so you want me to subtract all of those numbers and what I come up with? No, looking as though. As though I had a quarterly report in front of me. Right. Looking at that bottom line. Which I gave you, the $5 million. Actual year-to-date revenue. Right. That's what the end of the report would be generated as the available budget. The It'd actual year-to-date revenue, from what you're telling me, is probably somewhere around 117 to 118 million. Oh, I'm you sorry. You're asking for the actual revenue taken in. Yes, my apologies. $117,940,931. Okay, great. And the percentage over? 105. Okay, great. All right. President Jarrett, could I please have a recess? And thank you, Director Nardi. We will recess for five minutes. Please come back at 9.39.
Welcome back to the special meeting of the Northampton City Council. Uh, Council Labard, I believe I saw your hand earlier. Did you yes, still wish did. to speak? And then we'll go to Councillor Elkins. Councillor Labard. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank the mayor for doing what her finance team did. It's unbelievable here of what has occurred with this budget. The mayor explained it very thoroughly, and I want to thank our finance director, Chardine Nardine, for explaining even more. I think it's very, very valuable. I can't tell you as a city councilor, the many people that I have talked with told me they've always supported this Prop 2 and a half, and they couldn't do it this time. That's how bad it is in our city, financially financially. And I've told the mayor when I've talked with her, the concerns they have. Every time you turn around, the fees are going up or fees are being placed. They are very happy to hear this when it was in the Gazette of a hold on this prop two and a half. I think we have a great team, a finance team, and I am happy to see the increase that has occurred here and explained very thoroughly. And I also, with the counselor from Ward 3, Rothenberg, she had some questions, and I know for a fact that they were answered very thoroughly for her. So that's my, my, my concerns here, and I'm hoping as city counselors, we are kept in the loop very closely of every movement that's happening here with our financing, our financing. The mayor did state about six months here, this is critical for us to go ahead and make sure that everybody in every department and also the school departments and budget that we're working together on any type of movement that is showing, do we have to go back into another prop two and a half? And to be very honest with you, I feel a prop two and a half, which many people feel is like using it as the scapegoat and we need to go ahead, everybody, and live within our means. And I know with the mayor and her team, school committee, and also their finance director, will work on this with our city councilors very, very closely. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you to Christine Bissell for doing what you did and getting that extra interest and money for here, for our city. Thank you all. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Councillor. Can I just respond quickly? Yes, please. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. And but I just, you know, I want to reiterate that we, so the $2 million that we've added to the school budget using fiscal stability stabilization funds, we need to make sure that we have a recurring revenue source for that. So, you know, we are going to look really closely. Uh, we always do, but we're going to, we, to an eye to whether it's possible to postpone this override, um, we're going to, you know, closely look at, um, the next couple of quarters and, um, you know, we'll talk about it during the reports that Director Nardi gives um, and just be very, you know, we have to be very careful that that we have secured that that, that revenue for the Northampton Public Schools, otherwise it will create a deficit. So that's, that's what we are really focused on. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilor Elkins. Hi, thank you. Um, First of all, I want to thank um, uh, 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 Mayor Shara um, for bringing this um, back to us and giving us the opportunity to um, to look at it again, given the circumstances, and Director Nardi for your um, thorough um, explanations. Um, I want to say that I understand. I uh, it, it makes sense to me. I, I understand where we were in terms of our projections at the end of the third quarter when we saw that report and um and it makes sense to me how how we got here um and i, I want to say um i also want to just um you know credit to director nardi and the and the finance um, team which is to say that this is an incredibly difficult time to be trying to do these projections i mean covid was unlike the COVID period was unlike anything else, and it was unlike it both in terms of what the, the immediate in economic downturn was, but also the effect of all of the, um, you know, Biden administrations, um, and there there was some Trump 
<laughs> and there was some Trump aid um, <laughs> as well um, that uh, <clears throat> dramatically shifted what getting through COVID looked like, um, both at the individual level and at the municipal finance level. And that is to the good, I think, in general, but it is also made, uh, I think, makes um, your jobs um, in, in finance departments um, very difficult. And I, I applaud you. I think you've done a, an admirable job. Um, I am appreciative that we were able to... Um, give more money to the um give add more money to the budget um to the school budget um and as it and this has allowed us to to return to a timeline um for an override that was more like what was sort of projected in, in pre-covid days back when in 2020 when we passed the last override um this was more the or delaying a little bit more than this i think was the hoped for timeline so i am glad that we were back um, to that. And I just want to say that, you know, there's, it's a real thing that there is a disconnect between what is good here on the national level, um, economically, um, and uh, in terms of a growing economy and coming out of COVID and, um, and the jobs reports um, that have been stronger, not this last quarter, not as strong as I think hoped for, which will, we anticipate having an effect, but in general, we have this good, growing, recovering national economy. Um, but of course, we all know that there's a disconnect between that and the experience of people in um, in our daily lives, you know, the big ticket items of housing and higher education and medical costs and aging specifically are these kind of big ticket items that people are able to get new cars, which affects our tax, you know, uh, our, our excise tax numbers. And also they can um, you know, we, we are able to purchase consumer goods and, and you know, you see that and, and go out and we see that in the meals, taxes and things like that. But our day to day lives and the big ticket items are still remain quite difficult. And that's where the override really gets to be a struggle um, and passing an override and because it, it hits those one of those big ticket items. So I just want to say I want to note that we're not alone in this and that Northampton is experiencing that disconnect um, and people living here on the individual level are experiencing that disconnect. And um, I am very glad that um, we are able to offer um, a, a period of time more of respite before we ask our, our taxpayers again um, to, um, to, to think about raising higher taxes. Um, a question that I have for Director Nardi, um, Hi. Um, so I know that um, in the budget that we just passed, that we, you know, that in order to um, part of the strategy for um, making the additional money that we put in recurring was that was pushing revenues, which was pushing um, pushing our projections of revenues for fiscal uh, FY25. Does do these numbers give us any reason or cause to revisit those numbers and change anything about this? fiscal year's um, budget um, revenue projections, or have we already sort of pushed them to the point that more adjustment would be unwise? So, uh, I think cannabis, you know, with, with that makes me wonder, I mean, I feel like that's a little low. Um, I wouldn't make tons of changes. Um, again, I, as we look at the city budget and we start to push revenues more, I don't think we can do it. All, I would not recommend we do it all in one year. Um, again, as the mayor said, it, it is better to be cautious than it is to be overly optimistic. Um, but I do think this shows us that we can do more in FY 2026. Um, I don't think I would make many changes in FY 25 and now that the budget is set um i will have an opportunity to look at that when we set the when i do the recap um with the financial team um to look at that so i may push cannabis a little more um i think it it really will be um i don't think i'll make tons of changes in fy 2025 i guess is my point i, th I still think uh, what we're seeing is is better to be um, implemented in FY 2026 
um, which as the mayor has said, has given us the opportunity to um, look at things a little bit longer, hopefully push off the override, not just from doing it in November, but maybe longer, but we don't know that yet. Um, so no, I wouldn't make any changes in the FY 2025 budget with the exception of cannabis, because I do feel like in FY 2026, we will make um, further further um, pushes. Can I, but I'm so sorry, can I just jump in real quick? I just wanna, um, you know, cannabis had been going down steadily. So we really had to start adjusting um, what, you know, what revenue we anticipated from it. So now it's gone up a little bit, but you know, it's right. There's a very volatile, still new um, revenue, new market. And it's, it's not clear where it will sort of settle out. So it's interesting that it did go up a little bit this for the first time in years. Um, but I think we have to be careful about not overly uh, estimating it. Okay, thank you. That it makes sense to, I would just note that it makes sense to me that, um, um, that the more distance that we get into what's a, a normal post COVID economy, the more accurate uh, or not because uh, the things are not wildly off, but a, a small percentage of a big number is still a big number. Right. Right. Um, so, um, but it seems to me that we're getting every, as we inch away from COVID that, that, that projecting will get um, easier. Right. I think we can rely more on the three to five average year uh, historical data as we move away from COVID. Thank you. Uh, other councillors, questions? I'd like to make sure every councillor has the opportunity to speak before we go back to other councillors who haven't spoken. Councillor Moulton. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, the mayor uh, and her financial team responded quickly to this unexpected news, apparently um, within a week of uh, uh, Director Nardi's uh, determining that uh, the, the fourth quarter uh, revenue overages were significant. Uh, we are here this morning to, uh, to consider postponing uh, the override that that we had moved up to uh, uh, to November fifth, uh, and, and I really I, I applaud the mayor and her staff for uh, for being nimble and um, for uh, again responding to unexpected uh, developments uh, in in a way that I feel is very responsible. It's not unlike uh, the, uh, former Mayor Narkowitz uh, deciding to postpone the implementation of the of the most recent override, which was voted in March of 2020 for a year because of uh, the onset of COVID. Um, I, have, I have one very specific question for Director Nardi about uh, the fourth quarter, and then one more general uh, question for her. The specific question is, have you had a chance to, uh, uh, to try to determine why there was the, the, the excise motor vehicle excise tax is interesting because typically you said fourth quarter is uh, is weaker than others and yet this one was very strong. Do you have any sense of why that occurred? I have not had a chance to look into it and I will say so just a reminder for every Buddy, the um, major motor vehicle excise tax bills go out in February, and then there's 30 days to pay it, so they get paid in March. Um, so that's why that third quarter, you usually don't see much at all in the first and second quarters. You see the big one in the third quarter, and then you see, you know, a, a smaller percentage in the fourth quarter that trickle in. But I do not know why this year is different. I'm, I'm not sure... I don't know enough about the economy of selling cars of why it would be different. Um, I will certainly do my best to figure that out if why that is, but no, I don't know. And my more general question, uh, Director Nardi, is, is in looking at uh, uh, trends versus blips, I mean, we hope that the fourth quarter uh, revenue is not a blip. Uh, we hope it's it's indicative of a, a trend that's beginning of 
uh, stronger revenue really in, in, in a number of sectors. How many quarters uh, would you consider to be, you know, a fair number to, uh, to sort of verify that this is a, a trend rather than something that may, you know, that may be subject to, to volatility? Would you look at, say, the first two quarters of next year to, to, to uh, underscore uh, the likelihood that this is a trend? So I won't be able to do that for a motor vehicle, but I do think having two more quarters at FY 2025 will help us determine whether things are still looking as positive as they do now. Um, yeah, I'm not talking quarters. just about motor vehicle. I'm talking about right. across yes. the board because yes. hotel, motel, which typically has been going up uh, in yes. recent years, yep. cannabis, which is not, uh, right. But across the board, you, you'd like to see a couple more quarters. Before. Absolutely. Okay. The more data we have, I think the better it is. And I think, like you said, it's important for us to be flexible and base our decision and, and the timing of the override um, based on the data that we have. And the more data we have, I think the better our decision is. I agree. Thank you. Councillor Mayori. Thank you. I can't. the The uh, raise hand feature is not um, <laughs> obvious this morning. Uh, yeah. So I just I want I have a let me see. I have a few questions. Um, did we, uh, Director? Um, did we uh, do we know the number for FY twenty four of the budgeted but unspent funds? Ge the generally overall total. Uh, Director Nardi. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. the button. And I was also looking for my paper. So, no, again, sorry. Yeah. So, I just want to remind folks that the closing of the books happens in the months of July, August, and September. So, there are still moving parts in closing the books. Um, the actual deadline by the state is September 30th. Um, for us, we usually close a couple, finalize everything a couple weeks before. So again, everything is in flux, but I will be sharing on um, August 30th, the final FY24 budget. And I'm just looking for the paper. Give me a minute. It's not August 30th. It's... Excuse me, August 15th. I apologize. Well, at your next meeting, I will be presenting. I thought I had a preliminary one done here. Hmm. Is, there, is, is Councilor Miori not just at, is she asking the same question that Councilor Rothenberg asked? No, this is for on turnbacks. You're talking about turnbacks, correct? Yeah. Yes. I have the number you gave me on turbacks. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, one million four hundred and eighty five thousand eight hundred forty five. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted a general idea. Um right. And um I guess the other thing I'm noticing though is the interest in the quarter the third quarter had already really skyrocketed. So that wasn't a huge surprise, right, that the fourth quarter with the interest. Were no, but if you go to the bottom of that re same report that people are talking about, that third quarter, you can see we were yeah. at 75%. So that 1.5 was bringing us to the 75%. So again, I am making my best judgments at the time. Right. Um, I presented the third quarter to all of you and showed you that 1.5. And we all talked about the fact that we were only at 75% of our total revenues at that time. And that right. that 1.5 was carrying us to that. Okay. Um, I feel like I had another question, but I will let someone else go. I just want to name though, you know, when we talk about staff cuts from from using non-recurring funds, we're, we're experiencing staff cuts by also approaching the budget, you know, in a conservative fashion too. So we've got to find a good balance for the city because we've had we've had significant staff cuts this year. And and can I just address so when we talk about staff cuts as well, um, you know, 
we recommended the override because we've we've rolled in $2 million of fiscal stability into the budget. And at some point we need to find reoccurring, reoccurring revenue for every additional dollars of reserve we use that affects the amount of the override. Um, so again, this is not just, just these uh, additional <laughs> funds does not change the fact that we will need an override. Um, it doesn't change the, the talk about what's sustainable and what we can make reoccurring. Um, to me, this is just good news that we're talking about the change of the override and when it will occur. And our hope is to delay that as long as possible, if, if possible, but we still need one and it doesn't change the dynamic of what, what we can make reoccurring. Right, thank you. Thank you. Would any other counselors who haven't spoken like to speak before we go back to counselors who have? Seeing none, Councillor Rothenberg. Thank you. Um, Director Nardi, I think you may have just answered my one of my questions, but I want to confirm that I heard you correctly. Did you say you have rolled the $2 million into the base for the schools? No, what I said is an FY, so the override was intended to be implemented in FY 2026 with the idea that that $2 million, that $1.98 million that we took from fiscal stability and added to the budget will be able to be rolled into the base for the schools going forward. Um, that's the whole goal of the, of, of any override is to roll in reoccurring funds. Um, Are you saying that? having an override, you are not yet committing to roll that in. No, that's incorrect. We are rolling it into the base. We are, the two million dollars that we committed to NPS um, has to be rolled into the base, otherwise there will be another deficit. So the goal is to have recurring funds to be able to roll that into the base, but it has been rolled into the base and the goal is to reset the school budget so that from going forward, they don't have a deficit. And so related to that is this 3%, 4% figure. When it first came up as far as the growth of the schools on June 6, I believe it was, you said that because you had taken out 0.7 from reserves, you wanted to lock them in at 3% and that would help you get about half of that back. Then in your op-ed that came out after you called for the override, you were still referring to locking them in at 3%, even though you would have had recurring funds. Now you're paying yourself back for that 0.7. That's your plan with this uh, interest money. Are you still planning to lock them in at 3%? Because I really want to understand the implications for the schools in canceling the override. And I think that that $400,000, that difference between 3 and 4% is massive. I mean, there's still $400,000 that people are fighting for very hard at this very moment because those positions are so critical and student facing. So what's your plan on the three and 4%? Again, I wanna say that the, the timing of the override does not change the ability of the city to incorporate more funding into the NPS budget. The 8.5% increase represents a $3.2 million increase over the prior year. We used $1.2 million in reserves last year and we're using $1.98 million this year. Our goal, as we as mentioned and the mayor confirmed, is to roll those FY 2025 funds permanently into the base of NPS. The way we do that is by having an override. This is just talking about the timing of doing that. And our hope is that as we get more data, we will have a better idea of when that timing should be set. Well, it sounds then like you and the mayor are saying something different, right? What I'm trying to establish is their commitment for next year to have the current NPS budget in place plus 4% growth. So yes, so what I'm projecting is still on the 3% for FY 2026 and 3.5% um, in FY 2027. But again, as we get more data and we project out further into those years, that will be a discussion the mayor can certainly have. So why, so the rationale for the three keeps changing. It's like a goalpost that keeps moving. First, it started because we took out 700,000 then it just became part of the feature of the override. Now the override's going away and it's still there. Why can we not commit to giving them 4% growth? It's not a feature of the, well, it is a feature of the amount of the override. It's what can be rolled in to the base and sustainable moving forward. 
So for the next year, if you give a 3% increase, that's got to be rolled into the next year. And what we can afford and is sustainable and under Prop 2.5 after the override is put in there is what, what is projected out. Okay, so your position today is that you will roll the entire current base forward and growth at 3% for now. That's what we used for a projection, and that's what we talked about, yes, for this budget, yes. Is that correct, Mayor? Okay. Am I explaining that? Correctly? Yes, and that's no different than what we've was Thank you. during this budget since, since we've brought forward sort of the last budget. Yeah, okay. And if, if I could jump in to, to say that whether that will be 3% or another figure does depend on future revenues and revenue projections. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And so you will be looking over the next two quarters to see what will be appropriate to project revenue uh, when you're planning this, the fiscal year 26 budget. Correct. Thank you. So are you suggesting, Mayor, that you might be seriously considering putting an override on the ballot during an election year, during a municipal election year? We'll put an override on the ballot whenever it's needed to be able to have sustainable funds for city operations and school operations. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really the question, right? The, the reason that you say you put the override on was because the schools had needs. And so by canceling this override, postponing, and is that you have enough to meet the school's needs while the schools are still underfunded. So again, we are postponing the override because these revenues that came in unexpectedly high in fourth quarter allows us some breathing room to determine whether we're going to need an override for FY26 to be able to uh, sustain the the $2 million increase, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that came to NPS out of the fiscal stability stabilization funds and all of the rest of the budget. But you have a $2 million hole right now for the schools and you just found $2 million. Point of order. So what's point the of point order? Of Council Elkins has raised the point of order. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm afraid that we are getting um, beyond um, the agenda item of whether or not we will be rescinding um, this. Right, Council Rothenberg, if you, if you could keep to the question of, of uh, whether or not we should have an over, whether or not the override vote should specifically be on November 5th or not. We're canceling an override right now. That's what we're doing. We're rescinding an override. So talking about whether it's necessary is part and parcel to the agenda item. I agree. So again, we'll state that the override is only being delayed. It's not being canceled entirely. The override was intended to roll in the use of one-time funds into the city budget. That is still an issue. Our hope is that in order to support the entire city operation, support the community, that we continue to look at all of the data and delay it as long as possible, if possible, um, but it doesn't change the budget for FY20. Please don't interrupt, Councilor Rothenberg. Let, let Director Nardi finish. Or could I have the floor back? No, please. Go. Because Councilor Nardi was answering a question that no, you posed. I finished when I was interrupted by the point of order, and then Nardi took the floor after the point of order ruling. I'm going to let Council, uh, Director Nardi finish, and then you'll have the floor again. I just, I just wanted to clarify the purpose. The purpose of the override wasn't to, it doesn't change the current FY 2025 budget. We're just talking about the timing of the override. The purpose for it hasn't changed, just the timing may change. Council Rothenberg. So the order is to rescind the override, which is to cancel the override. I understand your intention is that you may bring one back another time. That's not what we are voting on today. We're taking it off the ballot. It's an on off toggle switch legally at this point. We are not, the order before us is not to put it on also for another time. So one thing at a time, we're canceling an override right now. You are canceling an override that you say was for schools and you are leaving schools 
unfunded by $2 million. I just want to be clear, Mayor, that your position then is that you have adequate funding to run your city and you think this is an adequate budget for the schools. We have adequate funding to ensure that the $2 million we've already taken out of stabilization funds can be covered for the time being. If we used another $2 million of, let's say, free cash for the MPS operating expenses this fiscal year, that would add another $2 million to the amount of the ongoing recurring expenses without a plausible plan in place to, to sustain that level of spending in subsequent years. So to be able to then roll in that additional $2 million, you would need to find a recurring revenue source. Like Otherwise, you would cause a deficit, and then you would need an, a far higher override uh, to be able to cover than that $4 million of, um, of revenue of one-time money that then needs to become recurring revenue. Thank you, President Jarrett. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions before we move to uh, the question of whether we should suspend the rules? Councilor Clemmer. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate, reiterate what other people have said and just thank the Mayor Shara and uh, Director Nardi and everybody else um, that worked on the, these finances to uh, quickly realize that we had some extra money and can postpone the override. Um, and just to clarify, if we, like some people are suggesting, using the override, the, this new money that um, that we got to add more money to the schools, we would still need an override and we would need more money next year because of this. Is that correct? Am I understanding it correctly? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then this um, this small group that is claiming um, that we should use this money in that manner are also, they are claiming that they will not vote for an override. So um, it's kind of like uh, chasing the tail or um, we're going to wind up with a giant hole. So it, it seems as though this is the best use of the money right now. And there's nothing nefarious going on with the way it's been found or the way we're using it. It was just really good planning. It was um, experts working on this throughout the year, being conservative with the money, investing wisely, and um, making great projections on on um, the future budget without um, and making conservative. You know, we got lucky. We 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 got some extra money this year, which is wonderful, and hopefully it, it keeps going and we can keep postponing this override. So I think my constituents are going to be thrilled if this is today and um, we can postpone it for a while. Councillor LaBarge. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rule. Second. Motion made by Councillor LaBarge and seconded by Councillor Moulton to suspend the rules to allow us to vote tonight. Is there, I mean, this morning, uh, is there any uh, discussion on suspension of rules? Councillor Mayori. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just feel like this, um, I'm fine suspending the rules for two votes. I would like to continue this discussion, though, at our next council meeting, it's a lot of information. And frankly, I, I think I'm going to have more questions and would like that the platform to, to follow up on this. Right. So uh, I heard that we will be having a fourth quarter budget presentation at our next meeting, and that would be an Good opportunity enough. to continue discussion around, uh, you know, our revenues and our projected revenues. Okay. As long as, as the scope you feel as president, the scope of that meeting will allow me to ask follow-up questions then. I, I think so. It, it's okay. going to be related to the budget, uh, to you know the previous year's right. budget. And because we use the previous year's budget to project the future budgets, then questions would be relevant about both budget years. Thank you. Um, Roll call, please, on suspension of rules. 
Dobbs. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Clemmer. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. And Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. It passes unanimously. We could entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Councillor Moulton and seconded by Councillor Elkins to approve the rescinding of the override order. Uh, discussion. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes, I just want to note that our, this is sort of a quick recap, really, we're living in in real time of the 617 presentation. This year end report is not surprising to me and should not be surprising to any of the councillors. If I look at quarter one on excise in the years 22, 23, and 24, I see 13%, 13%, 12%. If I look at quarter two, I see 20%, 19%, 19%. If I look at quarter three, I see 108, 91, 90. And if I look at quarter four, I see 131, 125, 130. If I look at the year end for the general fund total, quarter one, 22%, 23%, 23%. Quarter two, 47, 47, 47. Quarter three, 76, 76, 76. Quarter four, 3.5% over, 4% over, 5% over. When I did back of the napkin estimates on where I thought you would end up on the interest on the hotel and on the motor vehicle, you're right in the pocket. When you talk about things like interest bringing you up to 76%, that's true, but that's true of all of the years. And I actually would love to learn more about how you do that. You have incredible accuracy year after year. And that includes accuracy with the rate at which you underestimate how much you'll be bringing in and how much you'll be spending. When the mayor told us in her preamble today that underestimating this way is responsible because it avoids mid-year cuts, she ignores that it's irresponsible because it requires pre-year cuts. Your financial policies are not working. The DOR does not recommend a free cash amount. I again make the recommendation that council set up a committee to try to set a target free cash amount. Ward 3 has never been in support of this override. And let me say, when I speak on behalf of Ward 3, I'm speaking on behalf of the majority of Ward 3. I understand that some of you are for the override. The point here is that we took a position that you did not need an override in order to fully fund your schools. What you're doing today is taking off an override mayor and not fully funding your schools. So to be clear, Ward 3 maintains that you have enough money to not have an override and to not cut your schools. You're telling us today that you have enough money to not have an override, but you must still cut your schools. I am very pleased for the residents of Ward 3, particularly the widowers and the pensioners and the young teachers whose rent would go up with an override, that this is coming off. There are seriously people who would have to move out of Northampton, and that happens every time we have an override. This decision needs to not be made hastily. And it seems that the concept that what we saw in quarter three reports, which was... I mean, the majority of the money you say you found here was already present in quarter three, and we can get into that on August 15th. I'm glad we're going to continue it. I won't keep us very long right now. But, you know, you put an override on a ballot on June 17th, just weeks before the end of the year. And I understand it takes you some time to make your reports. But I also presume that you're tracking things like your interest, that you know that the federal interest rate hasn't changed since 2023, that it's only gone up since 2020. I know we're all waiting for it to go down, but we also all know that it hasn't gone down. That is predictable as long as the rates are not changed. I'm not saying that's your recurring revenue. I'm just saying it feels like whatever reason this override went on the ballot and whatever reason it came off is not what you say it to be. And that is troubling to Ward 3. Thank you. Sorry, 
respond? Yep. So, uh, Mayor or Director. <clears throat> the city's contribution to the schools increased 5.1% in FY23, seven, over 7% 7 in FY24, and 8.5% in FY25. This is the biggest three-year spending increase for MPS in decades and decades. Unfortunately, we were far too reliant on other one-time revenues, which derive from outside the city and its taxpayers. And these sources are now exhausted. They are not there anymore. It has created a deficit. I warned of this problem in my very first uh, budget projection presentation in, in my first month as mayor. I've repeated the warnings every year and have taken steps to address the problem. Last year, we began a necessary two-year plan to stop this fiscal hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging um, that would otherwise engulf all of the rest of the city's finances. We are constantly finding ways to stretch our dollars and trying to find ways to help on behalf of the schools. And we're gonna keep trying. But to say that we are underfunding the schools when it is literally, we're putting more money into schools, more money than has been seen in decades is just simply false. We are contributing as much as we possibly can for it to be sustainable and not to create this continuing cycle of creating deficits in the schools. We need to have stable recurring revenue to be able to fold all of these additional funds into the base. Otherwise, there's going to be a deficit. Anyone else like to speak to the matter that's on the floor? Councilor Moulton. Uh, yes, just to, uh, well, to, to, first of all, uh, I have confidence uh, in the mayor's financial team uh, I don't believe that uh, it is uh, 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 consistently underestimating uh, revenues for any nefarious purpose. I believe that uh, a conservative budgeting uh, uh, is, uh, as has been stated by both the mayor and Director Nardi, is uh, <laughs> is is much more. Um, Desirable than to uh, to uh, look at uh, uh, numbers that uh, don't necessarily uh, uh, forecast a trend uh, and build off of those. This is why it's important, I think, to uh, to underscore that uh, Director Nardi has said that she wants to look at a couple more quarters of of revenue of actual revenue. Uh, before, uh, you know, building that into her uh, her projections. And I, I think that that kind of fiscal policy makes sense to me. And it was underscored by the latest report we had from our outside auditor earlier this year. Uh, so to restate, I am, I, am, I am voting today to postpone this override, which had been had been moved up from the original timeline. And as Councilor Elkin stated, we're moving back to what had been the projected timeline uh, of likely uh, looking at the, uh, the possibility of an override sometime in calendar year uh, 2025. It had never been uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the move of the override to November 5th had never been intended to affect the current FY25 budget. It had always been uh, the intent to use that additional revenue starting in FY 2026. So that has, has not changed. I am glad that we are uh, able to postpone the override and we'll look forward to, uh, you know, to uh, the, the uh, looking at the figures from the first two quarters of FY25 and making a decision about uh, if and when uh, the override will be rescheduled. Thank you, Councillor. I will uh, speak to this. Um, so I believe all of what we fund in the city is important. You know, we express our priorities through the budget and over half of our general fund budget is funding for education. 
Um, so I, I support using these funds to delay the override vote. And um, it's an important priority to balance the affordability, uh, funding needs with affordability. And, and I just do want to note that although the, you know, our average income in the city may be increasing, it is not, all boats are not being lifted. Um, class differences are very real and the spread between higher and lower earners is growing. So it is, it is very much a concern that we have to balance this. Um, I do also encourage the mayor's office to look at how these increases affect the five-year look back. Um, and if appropriate, uh, add funds to this fiscal year. I, you know, I mean, we do, I understand that we must have a regular surplus in order to fund our capital needs and in order to, to have sufficient reserves. But it is also a fact that we are not meeting the needs of our students as much as we did last year. And um, anything additional that that's sustainable, that that meets our, you know, that won't run us a deficit, but that can be provided is important. Thank you, Councillor Mayori. Right, and this is kind of why I want to continue the conversation about, you know, basically what we're talking about is budgeting philosophy, and I wasn't really thinking about nefarious anything, but I would say that. I haven't heard, you know, when we talk about conservative budgeting, the reality is we made harmful cuts to the schools. I mean, that's that's just true. We've the cuts are it's not benign. And so we need to I just I think we need to be always talking about that as a as kind of a foil to the uh, you know, to the benefits of being conservative. Mm -hmm. We have to find a way forward that actually reflects and meets the needs of the school, the schools, and that will, um, that will that that should be put there, you know, as as important as kind of being conservative. And so I I just would hope that the conversation moving forward, we at least name that that's what's going on. And this, these are not benign cuts, this, you know. And this the needs of the schools will change and fluctuate and and are growing uh, every year. And so we have to be responsive to, to schools to have our the quality schools that we all want. So we're going to have to figure that out in, in the way we talk about our budgeting and our budgeting philosophies. Thank you. Any other counselors like to speak before we move to a vote? Seeing none, roll call please on approval uh, of the order to rescind the override vote. Councillor Elkins? Yes. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. Councillor Clemmer? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Maori? Yes. Councillor Moulton? Yes. Councillor Perry? Yes. Councillor Rothenberg? Yes. And Councillor Dubbs? Yes. That order passes unanimously. Um, thank you. Uh, everyone, thank all the councillors for coming together on such short notice for this special meeting. I uh, really appreciate the quick turnaround on scheduling. And um, we'll see you on, uh, hopefully not sooner than August 15th. <laughs> we won't have to have another special meeting. Uh, that's the last thing on our agenda. So uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, let's see. Councillor Elkins made the motion, though, seconded by Councillor Labarge. Yeah. Roll call on adjournment. Um, Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Clemmer. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Dobbs. Yes. And Councillor Elkins. Yes. Thank you all. We are adjourned. Thank you, councilors. Um, quickly, enrollment folks, um, yes. we're going to need this signed, and Laura, we're going to need this signed immediately because we need to get it um, okay. overnighted.